It's Button Shy Week here at Battered Board Games, and we've got another short review for you. Hello! Welcome to Bad at Board Games. Well, he's Bad at Board Games. <laughs> I'm Brad Lake. I'm Topher Ferguson. And we're Bad at Board Games, so you don't have to be. Today we're going to be talking about... Rove. The little robot. <laughs> On cards. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Rove is another one of those popular solo-only games published by Buttonshy. It is designed by Dustin Dobson and Milan Zivkovich. Um, we have actually enjoyed several of the games that they have designed, and this one I'm going to put up there with them as well. It is definitely an enjoyable, puzzle-thinky game. Yeah, and I would agree. We, You bought this one. I did. I did buy this one, Yes. Yeah, this one has been highly reviewed by a lot of people um, where they have definitely enjoyed it. You mm -hmm. know, we've seen quite a bit of reviews, not so many playthroughs, but definitely reviews of the game. And it's one that I thought, you know, this is up my alley. This is something that I want to pick up and play. Uh, the game itself consists of two styles of cards. You've got your maneuver cards or your, I forget what they call them, the mission cards, mm -hmm. um, the, the modules. Um, and so these are going to be out. Each of the modules are going to have a special ability to it in a different way that that module is going to move. So you're going to have a grid, and they're going to start in a 2 by 3 grid, but then you are going to have to move them. And you're doing that by playing your other cards. The other cards are two-sided. Typical button-shy game fashion, you either have your movement side, or you have the actual objective that you are trying to complete. So you're going to take your mission card, you're going to have one of them that you're going to have to complete a mission of, you're going to have to take all your other cards and use them. You're going to have up to five cards probably in front of you, maybe six depending on how you play your cards, and you're going to try to use your movement points as efficiently as possible because in order to win this game, you don't only have to complete one mission, you've got to complete at least seven. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be efficient with your moves. You have to be efficient with when you use the special powers because you only get a one-time shot with all the special powers. And I will tell you, it's a tight game. Yep. So the different programs that you have, you're only going to get one card back after you get it in the right sequence. And, you know, you can use two cards <laughs> to get them all in the right sequence, but then you're only getting one back. Eventually you're going to run out of cards. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like, you know, that's the puzzle, right? How do you use the movement that they have in the special one time out of seven programs that you're supposed to complete, as well as Sometimes you're able to use the special ability on the cards. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 an interesting puzzle. Even though there's a robot, the robot is up there on the program. You never get to you never feel like you're a robot. <laughs> you feel like you're playing an interesting game of chess. Yes. You have a bishop that jumps, you have a bishop that goes diagonally, you know, you have one that's a little different, it pushes a whole row or anybody that's in its way. You have a card that can duplicate another ability's card. You know, there's just some of these neat neat mm -hmm. things that they have. And then, you know, of course, you're going to end up drawing a card that's like, oh, I want this little blue spiral guy in the middle. And you're like, crap, I just put him all the way on the other side of my little matrix. And Coil the is last the one, hardest to move. How am I going to get that there? <laughs> yeah, the, the game itself is a quite a challenge of a puzzle. And the things that I find most enjoyable about the puzzle is not necessarily just being able to play the mission that's on hand, but trying to set up your next move, which might honestly be more important than actually just trying to complete the mission itself in one move or mm -hmm. one go, um, because you are trying to figure out how to use your movement cards as best as possible. You have two different values on your movement card. You can only move whatever's at the top, but if you complete when you start, not complete, if you fill this special requirement, then you get the higher movement value. And so maybe you are going to sacrifice one card because it can set you up for a very big movement the next time. Or maybe you know what next mission is coming and you are saying, well, I can complete this right away or I can set up to complete this one even faster if I take two moves to do this card here. Mm -hmm. So you're really having to think and sometimes think very far in advance in order to be able to be successful in this game. Mm -hmm. So what's the weight rating of this? I, oh, goodness gracious. Honestly, I didn't think about the weight rating of this one beforehand. Um, <laughs> this one, on I spot. find, yeah, I find this one to be the most challenging of the button shy games that I've played so far. 
It definitely is a puzzle, and it's definitely a puzzle that I'm not winning at every single time I sit down to play it. And maybe that's because I haven't played it enough, but I've played it quite a number of times, and I still... It's pulling teeth to be able to complete mm -hmm. seven full missions with the limited cards that you have. And so I'm going to give this one a 2.25. Yeah. Not saying it is overly complex, but it definitely is going to be the most complex of the games that I have played so far from Button Shy. One of the things we've tried to do in each of these discussions, and I know we've forgotten at least one, <laughs> is how easy was it to learn? Some of the Button Shy games I kind of ding on because reading them, the rules aren't, aren't clear. clear. Yeah. Did you read it and play it, or did you have to read it and reread it? And how many times did you have to reread it if you did? Yeah, I read the rules of this twice, and then I played. So I read it through once. I said, okay, I think I have an understanding of what it is. I read through it again and immediately started playing. So I'm giving this a four out of five in terms of how well the rules were. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're short. You know, sometimes with these button-shy games, you're getting multiple rule books. All of this is on only one. And that makes it, you know, a little bit easier to you be able to, to go read back through. And forth and yeah, flip you don't have to go forth. through. Yeah, and there's not a whole lot of iconography in this game either. That's another thing with some of the Button Shy games. The thing that Button Shy does great is they complete an entire game in only 18 cards. So you have to have icons, you have to have double sided, you have to have multiple different things on the cards themselves. One little sheet of paper made mm -hmm. it super simple to sit down and be able to play the game. So yeah, four out of five in terms of how well the, the rule books were. It might even be a 4.5 out of five. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the value rating of these, I just, you know, for those of you who continue to watch this series, will know what I'm getting ready to say. But for those of you who, this is the first one you're seeing, I like button shy games. I think for the price and what you're getting, 18 cards, you know, there's not much, you know, they're, they're charging more than a dollar a card. However, for the experience you're getting, out of a five, if this were a dollar, I would say it's a five out of five. This is a great deal. If it were $20, then you start to lose it. It starts to get down in that one and two value rating out of five. I am biased, like button shy. I push these more towards the four. I think at $12, which most of their games are at, it's a four out of five value. Now, if you kind of don't like button shy games or you don't like the puzzle that they present, you're probably going to think they're about a three. But even if you only play this twice and you're like, eh, it was $12, right? It's mm -hmm. not, they're not bad value for what you're getting. Yeah. So. I might give it a little bit higher of a value than that myself. Um, for $12, this was definitely a purchase I was excited to make. Mm -hmm. And I have played it enough, I think, now to already say that I've made my money's worth out of it. Mm -hmm. um, it is solo only. You're not going to play this with other people. So that might take your rating down a little bit. But this is definitely a puzzly game that I enjoy and is... You know, I'm, I'm getting more into these button shy games now. Right now, my life is hectic. It's crazy. I don't have time to sit down and play the bigger games. Mm -hmm. This is giving me more of the thinky feel than maybe Sprawlopolis does. Mm -hmm. It's worth it. You know, I'm sitting down for five, 10 minutes playing a game and I'm getting a challenge, my, a brain challenge. I, mm -hmm. I like that a lot. Yeah. yeah. I like this game as well. Um, and it is thinky. I don't know if I liked it the best out of all the games that we've played. Mm -hmm. But so my BGG rating on this, I, I'll stick this at a seven minus. Like okay. I still think it's a seven. Um, I thought it was interesting and I'm like, you know, I, I got to six out of seven and you kind of like, I think over time you'll, you'll win, but like it is, it's not, it's not a give me, you know, it's not like here's an easy mode that you'll win. Like if you wanted to win, make it easier complete five out of seven missions, right? Or six out of six, you know, then you, then that would make it easier, but to get seven out of seven missions definitely gets, gets tough. So yeah. what kind of BGG rating are you looking at? Yeah. I'm giving this a 7.5. I'm enjoying it. Nice. I really am. Yeah. It's one that I can see playing for a while because you will start to learn how to be more efficient with the different modules and how to move them around. Mm -hmm. But there's always still going to be a very random aspect to this game. That's going to cause you to have to stop and say, wait, I need to figure out how to be efficient. Um, so I really do enjoy it. I think it's a fun one. It's one that I'm throwing in my work bag and actually pulling out occasionally if I have a you know 10 minute break to be able to play a game. Um, so yeah, nice. 7.5 for me. We hope you enjoy this series. We're just enjoying playing the games and talking about them and maybe exposing some of you to button shy themselves. So remember, however you play, whether it's solo, with family or friends, enjoy whatever games you are bringing to the table.
Have a great night.